Hi guys, I'm Dr. Heather Hirsch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about this book, When Sex Hurts. This is an incredible book. One of the authors of this book, Dr. Joe Kraft, is an amazing friend of mine, also authored by several incredible experts in sexual medicine. The reason I wanna talk about this book today is because it's something I've not yet talked about on the channel. I think this book is an incredible resource. Today I'm gonna to talk about three common reasons why sex hurts, and we're also gonna talk about the biopsychosocial model of sexual health. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Dr. Heather Hirsch, and yes, I am wearing the same color as my chair today, so I hope I don't blend in too much. I'm one of the nation's leading menopause and midlife health experts, and author of my book that's coming out in this summer, Unlock Your Menopause Type, more about that at the very end. In this week's video, I'm gonna talk about three common but different types of pain with sex and it is the following number one genital urinary syndrome of menopause number two vaginismus and number three vulvodynia and if you don't know what any of those are i'm going to break them down all in really to understand terms starting first and foremost with genital urinary syndrome of menopause or gsm for short now gsm is a term that actually stems from an older term called a vulval vaginal atrophy and if you want to know what that stems from it really stems from the hormonal changes that cause a change in the tissue ph of not just the vagina although we immediately think of the vagina vagina but also the vulva the clitoris the labia the bladder and the urethra so the term vulval vaginal atrophy was a little the term vulval vaginal atrophy was a little exclusive it didn't include the bladder and the urethra and those are so important and so hence the term gsm evolved a couple really important physiologic changes happen as we lose estrogen through the perimenopause to menopause transition. The first is that the pH of all of those tissues change. They go from a more acidic pH to a more basic pH. Because of that change in pH, the cellular layer doesn't flourish as it normally does. Blood vessels don't come in and replenish those tissues. And therefore the skin becomes pale, thin, and dry. It's very easy for it to crack, tear, or bleed, and it is not well moisturized. It is not well naturally moisturized. It is not lubricated well. This is why for a lot of women, sex becomes painful. It's also a big reason why orgasms become weaker is because we're losing sensation, we're losing tissue layers of that dermis. We're losing so much because of the hormonal changes through the menopause transition which are by no means our fault. They are normal physiologic processes, but it's important to understand because this is such a significant issue that has been drastically undervalued in its importance in midlife women's health. I've done many, many videos on the treatment of genitourinary syndrome of menopause. You can check this one out here. This is all about the best type of vaginal estrogens. Because this video isn't just dedicated to genitourinary syndrome of menopause, I'm gonna briefly talk about the treatment options here. If you follow me on any of my other platforms, please feel free to do so. I'm at Heather Hirsch MD across all social media platforms. But truly, I believe, along with many other menopause experts, that vaginal estrogen is the safest and most effective form of treatment on the planet for GSM. Vaginal estrogen is also extremely safe for almost every woman because it does not travel systemically. Now, while my videos are not direct medical advice and you definitely are going to want to talk to your clinicians about vaginal estrogen, its safety and efficacy is unparalleled. And the reason I really advocate for vaginal estrogen is because, and I'm going to talk about moisturizers and lubricants next, moisturizers and lubricants can never change the pH back to what it was when you were making estrogen. And that part there is crucial. What the vaginal estrogen will do is literally reverse aging of the tissue by decreasing the pH, making those cells work, allowing them to secrete their moisture and their lubricants, allowing that tissue to be pink and fluffy and healthy. 
If right now you don't have access to vaginal estrogens, moisturizers are a really great option and you should use them daily. Just like we moisturize our face twice a day, you should honestly be moisturizing the sensitive tissues of the vulva, the introitus, and even a little bit into the vagina. Lubricants are great, and to keep this short, I really like Uber Lube. That's one of my favorite. Slippery Stuff is also another good one. However, lubricants are not moisturizers. They are literally just meant to be a slip and slide over the tissue. They are meant for usual sexual activity or anything else. Playtime with friction is gonna help to reduce that friction and make it so it is not so painful. Okay, after going on and on and on about GSM, vaginismus is another reason why sex hurts. So what is vaginismus? Well, as I've had to use telemedicine to ask patients about or elicit a history of vaginismus, what I'll usually say to my patients, do you feel like you're tensing or tightening or trying to keep things out? And if you are like, yes, while you're watching this, that is vaginismus. It's also known as high pelvic tone. It could also be pain with the insertion of a speculum, where the doctor will actually see your muscles involuntarily tighten. Now, the same thing happens if your goal is penetration, but subconsciously your muscles are going to tighten. And this is really important diagnosis because you may not have genitourinary syndrome of menopause. You may, you may just have vaginismus. And knowing that you have vaginismus can help because with a good diagnosis is better treatment plans. We're gonna talk about vaginismus again when we talk about biopsychosocial models of sexual health. But vaginismus is this involuntary, again, tightening and kind of this message of stay out of my body. It could come from history of trauma. It could come from previous painful sex. So more painful intercourse equals more painful intercourse because the tissue and the muscles become stronger. It could also just simply be because you have trust issues with that person or your partner. Treatment options for vaginismus is first and foremost to rule out any other type of pain that could be treated. For example, genitourinary syndrome of menopause treated with vaginal estrogens. And the best form of treatment for vaginismus after a good diagnosis truly is pelvic floor physical therapy. Now, there are many, many experts in pelvic floor physical therapy. Last week on my podcast, I had my good friend, Melissa Gallo, come on. She's a women's health pelvic floor physical therapist. What she advocates a lot about is not only learning how to tighten the muscles for Kegels, but actually how to do a reverse Kegel and learn to relax the pelvic floor. If you have vaginismus, you actually need to learn not how to tighten, but to relax. And in this case, Kegels could actually be dangerous because it's only strengthening that muscle further when it actually needs to learn how to relax. Treatment might also include hip work, lower back work, and potentially dilators that you would use at home to help you again grow more comfortable with relaxing the pelvic floor. A pelvic floor physical therapist is going to absolutely be your best advocate in working through vaginismus. Lastly, what I love about this book is they do a lot to discuss vulvodynia. Vulvodynia, dynia means pain, and vulva is your vulva. And vulvodynia, there's numerous causes. And in the book, they break those down into hormonally mediated reasons, inflammatory mediated reasons, and neurologic mediated reasons. In fact, one of the pages of this book is just too good not to show you. I love how they break this down by all the different types of uh, etiologies of the vulvodynias. And what they really do is map out what type of history a patient might have, what you might see on physical exam, and actually how you can treat all the different kinds and types. And it's not just the vulva, it could be vestibulodynia, it could be clitoridynia, there's lots of dynias. Now let's talk about what is the biopsychosocial model of sexual health. This really means how does the rest of our lives inform our sexual life, our relationship status, how much sleep we might be getting, do we have chronic illnesses, do we have kids suffering with chronic illnesses, do we have pets that wake us up in the middle of the night, do we have children that come in our bed so we don't feel comfortable having sex in our bed. There's many different things that make up the biopsychosocial model of sexual health. And all of that is truly such an important history into why you might be having pain. Not only that, but a significant emphasis, particularly on sexual health, is any history 
history of female trauma. From sexual trauma to financial trauma to any type of trauma, this can show up for women as our sexual beings. And so a really good social and medical history are so important. As a surgical history to find out if you've ever had an ovary removed or potentially there's a hormonal mediated biopsychosocial cause that are all entwined together. So a really good doctor is crucial in helping you work through sexual pain. One of the best resources that I have found for help is ISHWISH and that's the International Society for the Study of Women's Sexual Health. I will also link their website in the description below. You can actually search for a provider and that is a great place to start if after going to your internist or your gynecologist you haven't gotten satisfaction with the answers, you feel like there is something more, I would definitely recommend seeking out an Ishwish provider. I could literally talk forever about this. You know, I try and keep my videos around like the 10 to 12 minute mark and this one here might be over. And there is so much to talk about on this topic. If you have further questions, if you want me to dive into any of these a little bit deeper, please let me know in the comments. They really do help guide me in terms of what you guys want to hear and what kind of content I can make that's not already out there on the internet, that's something new and crisp that you want me to teach you about. Thank you guys for following me on my corner of the internet. Please like and subscribe. That really helps the algorithm let more women know this is a great channel for evidence-based information on all things midlife and women's health, and I will see you guys for a brand new video next week. Bye everyone.